we are talking about LLM ecosystems. And when we're talking about LLM ecosystems, what we are basically saying is APIs, right? So ChatGPT uses APIs to talk to third party services and they in turn use APIs in order to respond or to talk to other services. So it's all, it all boils down to API security, at least from our perspective. Hi, this is your Sapnil Bhartia and welcome to our show, Let's Talk About AI. Today we have with us once again, Yanni Balmas, Vice President of Research at Salt Security. Yanni, it's great to have you back on the show. Very good to be back here. Today we are going to talk about uh, the vulnerabilities that Salt found within Chat GPT plugin. So give us a bit of an overview of this plugin and what vulnerabilities you folks found there. First of all, our main intent with this uh, research project was to kind of try and dig in and, and, and to figure out more about security issues that might be with LLMs, right? LLMs came into our, our lives in a big storm. Uh, and, and I think for many of us, they really changed a lot uh, in how we do things. Uh, and, and I think in my personal opinion, there are one of the most uh, dramatic uh, technological advancements uh, and changes that I've seen in my career. So everything is perfect in terms of functionality and usage, but what does it mean in terms of security? Are there any risks involved in it? Um, since it developed so quickly, it's really hard to say because this, the entire security community is still following up on that and, and, and probably not, not everything has been revealed yet. Uh, so we tried thinking of how can we actually do this and what can we find. And the first conclusion we got to is that there are um, two major places where you can find issues uh, with LLMs. One of them would be within the LLMs themselves, right? And, and I think in that bucket, uh, there were already several research projects done, also several vulnerabilities found, and this is talking about things that are in the core LLMs, like prompt injection attacks or things of that nature. Uh, and since, since this was already kind of an explore territory, we tried thinking if there is maybe another bucket, something that is less explored, and, and we can find new things there. And what we figured out really quickly is that there is such a bucket, and this bucket does not refer to the LLM core itself, but to its ecosystem. And when I say ecosystem, basically what I mean is these plugins in ChatGPT, the ecosystem is basically plugins. So if you remember the initial, the first days of uh, ChatGPT, before plugins, when you asked him any question about anything relevant, like give me uh, what time is the Knicks game uh, on, right? Uh, ChatGPT's response would be, I'm very sorry, but my uh, data set is all uh, updated up till 2021, and sorry for that. And, and, and that was a major um, gap in, in, in the functionality of any LLMs, and the way to deal with it is to actually integrate plugins. Plugins allow LLMs to interact with external data sources, right? It could be the internet for searches. It could be other things like your Google Drive or your GitHub account or whatever. And once you have them, then you can very naturally, like you do with ChatGPT, ask him questions about the internet, about your code base, or about anything else, making the LLM solution, I think, more complete. So these are the plugins, and this is also the bucket that was far less explored in terms of security, and that's where we focused our research on. And as you see the popularity of LLMs industry-wise, what kind of risk or threat that you see might, of course, there are certain things, we'll also deep dive into this vulnerability, but you see that you know organizations, they are so excited about using these technologies that they are not even looking at those uh, risks. Well, I think this is very, what you just described happens with every technology. I think it's, it, it's, it's, this is human nature. We are functionality first and security second. Uh, first, what can it give me? And then, oh, but wait, is that really secure to use? That, that's usually the natural order of, of questions. That's very natural, I think. 
but the thing is that since LLM grew so fast, uh, maybe there's a lot of risk there that we still haven't accounted for. Uh, what are the risks? Well, it depends mainly on which bucket are, are we talking about. Let's focus on the bucket that we did our research on, the plugins. Well, since now LLM is connected to a lot of external sources, the risk is that you might expose data from your external sources or somebody can manipulate data in these external sources and it all really really depends on which exter external sources are you using and which plugins uh, basically uh, are you using and the risk will be very uh, associated to the specific plugin and specific external source uh, we are talking about. Now let's just go back to this uh, research uh, that, that you folks uh, did with the vulnerabilities. Uh, talk about you know what kind of impact it will have on businesses and the impact could be severe, it could be like very like subtle and if let's talk about the impact and then what organizations are doing about it if they don't do the right thing, what will be the long-term effect of these vulnerabilities? I think maybe the best, best, best way to approach this would be with a simple use case, right? And actually one that we found in our research. Uh, and here we're talking about a very popular uh, ChatGPT plugin uh, that's used to connect to your uh, GitHub account, right? The functionality this plugin gives you is wonderful. Basically, now you can talk to... ChatGPT, uh, like you do with any other person, and just ask him questions about your code base and get responses from ChatGPT. Amazing functionality, really, really helpful, can really speed up processes and everything. Uh, that's functionality wise, right? Security wise, what we found is that this plugin was actually vulnerable. Uh, it was vulnerable through some manipulations of OAuth in this specific case. Uh, and if I were an attacker and I would exploit this vulnerability, what this would actually give me is the ability to see all your code base and possibly even modify it without you having any idea that this thing is happening. Actually, this specific attack was even a zero-click attack, so I don't even need you to interact with anything. I can just simply, uh, just if I know your email account, uh, that's basically all I need um, in order to exploit this vulnerability. Now, the impact could be very severe, understand. Uh, if you are, for just, just for example, if you are Microsoft and you chose to choose this plugin, that means that I now have access to all your GitHub account and all the code base within it. And that could be very catastrophic and it really depends on your code base and, and on who you are. Uh, that, that will determine the severity of this uh, exploit. But I think the potential, um, the harmful potential, at least is very clear here. How can teams prepare for, I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's LLMs, softwares have bugs, you know, the way you deploy them, misconfigurations, you know. So there's always risk associated with that. But how, what is your advice so not only just for the security teams, but developers also who do want to take advantage of these technologies, you can talk about either cultural practices, you can talk about best practices, you can talk about guardrails, you can talk about gates, so that you know security should not delay or slow down the advantages that these technologies bring to the teams. It's a really good question. And I must first mention that our research was focused on ChatGPT, uh, but the, the, the overall, the conclusions we got from our research, we believe they are as relevant to any LLM technology, right? It's, we couldn't uh, possibly research every LLM solution. We chose ChatGPT because we like it and we use it. Uh, but same thing applies for any LLM, basically. And regarding your question, it's a really good question because I don't think there's one answer to it. And it really depends on each organization and, 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 and their culture or security culture. Uh, for that matter, uh, for example, one solution could just be by uh, procedures, right? So, uh, uh, yes, we are using LLMs, but you can't just connect whatever data source 
you want to connect uh, to your LLM, it needs to pass approvals and we need to make sure and we need to make sure that data is actually not sensitive and so on and so forth. That could be one solution. Um, another solution could be to place uh, safeguards, technological safeguards around it, looking for anomalies, looking for anything suspicious, looking for sensitive data that shouldn't pass uh, over this transmission line uh, and, and a million other things. But I think the very um, common thing between all of these is awareness, right? And, and that's what I strongly believe. People, in order to mitigate the risk or to uh, kind of build uh, policies, procedures, or technological solutions around it, you first need to know that uh, that this thing is actually vulnerable and this thing is risky to you. Um, and that's where I think that's the downfall. I think people don't really understand that right now. They mainly see the functionality and value that LLM will give them, and they far less see the, the risk that it brings them. And hopefully our research could help people uh, understand that a bit better. And from that point, really, every organization can take it in a very different direction, and there could be uh, a lot of solutions. I mentioned, too, there could be more, a lot more than that. In an organization, whose responsibility should it be to contain the risks associated, as you mentioned? Is, is it the security team? Is it the CISO high-level, board level? Is it at the developer level? Well. Again, I think this is very dependent on the organization. Uh, you know, I work for salt security, as you mentioned, and we deal with API security. Uh, same problem with APIs. And by the way, when we're talking about LLM ecosystems, if you just look underneath the hood, it's all APIs, right? How does one system communicate with each other? Usually the answer will be APIs. So it's not very different. And the reason I'm mentioning this is that even APIs is, is, is a question. Who is responsible for them in the organization? I, I think from our experience, it's kind of different between organizations. Sometimes it's the CISO who is responsible for them. Sometimes it's the DevOps who is responsible for them. Sometimes it's the SEC uh, DevOps. And there could be many answers there. I don't think there still is one de facto standard that every organization is following. And this is pretty... Um, that will change... Uh, sometimes even pretty dramatically between one organization and another. If you'll ask my personal opinion, uh, I think it should be the CISO. Uh, this is a security risk. It's a pure security risk. Uh, and therefore, the accountability and responsibility should be the CISOs. Uh, but that's, again, only my personal opinion. It could change from uh, one company to another. Perfect. Thank you. Now, we have talked about the problem area. We talk about the impact. We also talk about what teams can do. But let's also talk about what kind of tools, what can be offered to these teams so they they also have some tools to rely on. What is Saul doing in this space? Well, uh, it's a very good question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, and again, I think I mentioned it briefly before. Uh, we're talking about LLM ecosystems. And when we're talking about LLM ecosystems, what we're basically saying is APIs, right? So ChatGPT uses APIs to talk to third-party services, and they, in turn, use APIs in order to respond or to talk to other services. So it's all it all boils down to API security, at least from our perspective. Uh, most of the vulnerabilities that we found uh, are basically in the interaction point between LLMs and the plugins. And those interaction, interaction points could be how do LLM authenticate with these plugins because he needs to authenticate on behalf of the users. Uh, and how does permissions work there? And this could actually be a far more complex problem than it sounds uh, uh, than it sounds in, in first place. Uh, and, and, and since it's complex, uh, this is also usually the place where we find the uh, vulnerabilities. Um, um, usually, uh, authentication in APIs, at least modern APIs, is working with OAuth or some other uh, technology, equivalent technology. Uh, and that is something that we specialize in in SALT, and we have specialized protections against OAuth. We detect anomalies in OAuth, things that uh, I saw the past 1 million requests over the channel, and this request looks very, very, very strange. We believe it's an attack. That's, that's the way we do things. 
Um, and from our testing, it works very well on LLM ecosystems as well as in any other APIs. So that could be very one very good solution. Uh, at least I strongly believe in this direction. Yannick, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about the impact of, you know, of course, the security aspect of LLMs that we don't talk. We do talk about how we can use LLMs for improving security, but we don't talk about uh, this aspect. So thank for all those insights. Thanks for the work that your research team is doing there. Thanks for sharing the what what organizations can do, how SALT can help them. And as usual, I look forward to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. It was my pleasure.